Good morning, it's Sunday and we're in Hoxton in London and we're here because apart from going to see Jack Whitehall last night at the O2, we're here to visit the Home Museum which is a free museum and it looks really good. There's lots of different room sets set out and gardens to look at so I'm hoping to get some inspiration. Damn. I'm just here looking for inspiration and we've just seen this. Mark and I really wanted to do this on our house. I'm not sure whether we're going to be able to, but the downpipe um, and chains here, so this is where the water runs down into the drain, rather than having a traditional drain pipe. Starting off with the beautiful gardens. Well, that's what I like to see, a lovely greenhouse. Today is all about getting inspiration. So I'm looking at this greenhouse, we're looking at the design. And here we are really excited because we've actually picked up some Victorian um, tops like this that we'll be using on our greenhouse. We're going to make it a reclaimed greenhouse. So this is for the cold frame. But it's really nice to see it in a modern form and to start getting excited about how ours is going to look. Really loving this garden. If I bring you a bit closer you can see that at the front they've just got a row of galvanized baths and then behind it's just pots. So I believe this is all on slabs so yes nothing is actually planted in the ground but it's just made the most spectacular display. That's another idea for um, Star Corner. And let me just show you these. Look how incredible they are. When we turn the corner, I can hear myself squeal with delight. Look at this. I love that. That's just got ferns in. Can I have one of those? If you have to. I do. <laughs> That's brilliant with the ferns in, isn't it? Yeah, it does look nice. You just make me work where we go. <laughs> I'll just knock one up this afternoon. <laughs> it is definitely something that I will be trying to do on a smaller scale back at Star Corner. Really low maintenance, different lavenders, some pots, gravel, just a really, really simple but effective design. Really love this. And now my mind is just on overdrive. This is the herb garden and I, again, I'm so inspired. There's all different types of herbs. We've got culinary herbs, herbs for dyeing, herbs for medicinal purposes aromatherapy herbs just I've been taking pictures of all the different herbs and I absolutely love I you know I love my herbs I always show you my herb garden and what I'm doing but um, this is just taking it to a next level so in amongst the the roses you've got all these different herbs which I was already doing in my rose garden anyway but as I said this is just taking it to a whole new level. This is absolutely beautiful, so peaceful. Considering that the over, overground railway is just there, you can see it going by. And then this is just such an area of tranquility. It's stunning. I wish I had the talent to do something like this, but that is definitely beyond my remit. Much to my family's despair, we've left the museum and now I found an antique vintage shop to look around. It just has to be done. We've only got 24 hours in London, it's just a flying visit. So we've just got time to introduce our girls to Dishoon, which is 
an Indian restaurant, which we really love. This one's in Shoreditch. And then we need to hop back on the tube and make our way home. I don't know about you, but I could eat curry every day if I got the opportunity. Firstly, today I've just been picking some rosemary and lavender and mint because I've spotted some moths in my house and I believe that if I put these in the house that moths really don't like the smell of those so uh, that's just an aside from what I'm about to do but hopefully that works but moving on after my video last week thank you for all your advice about black spot um, it threw me into a quite a spin that my lovely rose had black spot but anyway I've done my research and now I'm going to follow the instructions and try and deal with this rose. I was hoping to spray it as well today. Um, I'd love to take an organic method, but I'm so panicked about my rose dying that I have actually gone out and bought a spray. And maybe I'll do a bit more research into organic methods another time. But for now, because of the rain, because of the thunder that I've just heard above me, I'm going to um, prune it back, cut the black spot off and come out and spray when it's not raining. Right, so from what I've read, I've got to identify all the black spot. Now, I've disinfected my secateurs before I started and I will disinfect them again before moving on to any other rose bush. So um, let's go. Anything that's, that's look as though it's infested, I need to trim even if it looks as though there's nothing left, which actually looking at this, that may well be the case, but need to be careful not to drop the leaves, that these need to go straight into, straight into um, the waste bin. I can't afford any cross-contamination. But yeah, this is really quite bad. So taking all of these off. Now from what I've seen online, if any of the leaves had fallen off, I'd have to scoop those up. I'm not even sure I'm chopping this in the right place. I'm sure that I'm going to get feedback telling me that I should have trimmed it in a different place. If you want to tell me anything, please do. I'm just starting to learn about roses. So I am more than happy to take on any advice because I really do want this to be a beautiful part of the garden. Oh gosh, look at that. Those fly over now and again, not very often, but when they do, they're so noisy. So I'm not trimming, I'm only trimming the leaves off that do have the black spot on. Hopefully that will do the job. Although, it, like I said, it does seem to be quite a lot of it. Try and leave as many leaves as possible. You don't want to see me do all of this, so I'll stop there. Um, I'll show you, as soon as I've trimmed it all, I'll show you how much I've had to cut back. But um, hopefully I can nip this in the bud and uh, get on top of it. Fingers crossed. Just spotted these. Can you remember I planted these really dark? I thought they were more black nasturtiums. They're just flowering. I can't remember what colour they were meant to be. A soft pink, I think. The nasturtiums just haven't come out in the colours that I thought, but I do love that one. So pretty. Oh my goodness, look at my poor rose. I'm not sure whether this is okay. I've taken all the black spot off and now this is all that's left of it. Um, I'm going to spray it. It's thundering. I don't know whether you can hear it, but um, I'll spray it when I get a chance. But 
I, I'm a bit concerned but I have read that roses are quite resilient so fingers crossed that it's going to be okay but come and take a look at this one with me I'm not going to touch it with these secateurs I'm definitely going to spray this I think I'm going to cut some of the leaves off on here because I think that this is also suffering from it not in quite the same way so I'm going to go in and disinfect my secateurs and then come out later and have a go at this one just as I started a rose garden and I want it to look all beautiful and perfect I seem to have um, a fungal problem but anyway let's hope that I can get this one sorted time to go in now for a cup of tea it's raining and um, thundering and I don't want to get wet so come on in I've got Rowan with me this week. She's on work experience. She decided that she'd like to learn about what I do. So she's decided to shadow me. I'm trying to impart all my knowledge on social media, styling, photography, selling online. I do do quite a lot of this and that. So she's completely shadowing me and finding out what I do on a weekly basis. I think she'll actually be surprised because I'm sure she thinks that I just am at home all day doing a bit of gardening, doing a bit of this, but I do far more. Anyway, we've sold some things on Sutton and Daughters, my vintage website. So we've packed the parcels up and now we're heading to the post office to post those. And whilst we're there, she's been so good this morning, I think we might treat ourselves to tea and cake. Does that sound like a plan? Excellent, let's go. I like to see a man in my bedroom <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on today Always. just trying to get the um the second set of doors painted so i need to get two coats on this really as a minimum so this isn't a primer is it this is the no, this is this is the um oil-based paint again you don't need to prime the wood which is rather appealing to me it's an extra step i can just put this straight on and it will eventually set hard. And how long will it take to set? Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I think it's. I think it, it, I think it's kind of days rather than hours. But you know, for it to fully go off, it will take a few days, and then eventually it will form like a bugger. It will form um, like a crust on it, like a hard surface. Mm -hmm. And although you won't see it. It just gives you that protection that you don't necessarily get from other paints. So it's the plan to actually put this in at the weekend? Well, as long as the weather's okay, we'll get this put in. I've got to get some brickwork done though for this to sit on. Just one course of bricks. Yeah. And then when that's done and dry, we can then think about getting this put in, which would be great. So this, if you're watching, this is the door that leads into the bedroom so the external door that will be into our bedroom we've got a downstairs bedroom and uh, this is the state of our bedroom at the moment i can't even show you what's lower down but yeah it will go just there so fingers crossed that's another job to do this weekend and what about glass um glass is all measured up for um, and priced up so we just need to get that ordered it can take a couple of weeks to come in um, it's all got to be obviously double glazed argon filled so it makes it a little bit more thermally efficient um, a little bit more expensive but I think it's probably worth it and then when they come we can get them fitted another step forward yep and then we can we're, we're then properly watertight really Apart from the skylights. Well, apart from, the, yeah, apart from the skylights, but... That's a skylight there. So this is our bedroom. And then just going through here, this is leading into the kitchen, which is here. And 
I'm sure I've told you this before, but we're hoping to have, we've got, we're going to, going to have a glazed pantry here, panelling here, and then here we're hoping to have more panelling or a bookcase, we haven't quite decided, and then this is going to be a hidden door. That's the plan, isn't it? It is indeed, yeah. Brilliant, I'll let you get on them. Okay. I'm just about to head out to Norfolk Herbs, which is only 10 miles away. And I've only ever been once when I first moved in. I think it was the middle of winter and they didn't really seem to have a lot there, but uh, it's going to be a lot different today because we're in the middle of peak herb season. After visiting the Museum of Home at the weekend, I've really got some more ideas about this garden and I am changing my plan slightly. So I still am going to have a rosemary hedge all the way around the edge, but there's going to be four separate small beds. You can see here, I'm going to build another small path going up there and the same up there. So in this, on this side, there'll be four beds and then mirrored on the other side, which I haven't done yet, will be four beds. In the middle of each bed will be a shrub rose and the slight tweak in plan is that I've now decided to put herbs, infilled with herbs, around the roses. And completely inspired by my visit to the Museum of Home, I... Ma Maple, what have you done to my pass? <laughs> what have you done to my pass? Looks as though she's been... Look, she's been digging. <gasps> have you been digging? That's okay, it's your garden too. Just in case anyone's concerned about maple spending so much time outside, even when it's raining and damp, it's where she wants to be. We can call her in, we can try and get her in, but she loves being outside in the summer. Um, the only thing really that will bring her inside is the winter when it's really cold. And even then, she still likes to be outside. Don't you, maple? Anyway, going back to the herbs, in each bed there are going to be different types of herbs and that's what I want to go to the Norfolk Herbs for today to take a look. So in this bed it could be herbs for dyeing, that bed herbs for medicinal purposes, herbs for cosmetics, herbs for culinary purposes, maybe some witchcraft herbs on the other side, who knows? I'm going to go and see, to see what they've got, to see the different types of herbs that I can get and then come up with a plan. I may not buy any herbs today, although I have found out that there is such a thing as a pink rosemary, which I think with these pink roses, that that would be preferred. So hopefully they'll have that one. I can't remember its name. I think it's called Mallorca Pink, but we'll go and see if they've got that. I might buy one of those, but let's go and take a look. This wasn't the plan the rain. We won't want to get out of the car. Let's hope it stops by the time we get there. These are pretty. Pelagoniums. Might have to get some of these. Really pretty. Celery leaf, sorrel. Oh, that looks a lot nicer than mine. Mine's tiny. What's that around there? Oh, look at that. That's good.
such a great place to come. There's some herbs I've just never ever heard of. This one's called Purslane, which is good for salads. Um, that one there was Red Orac. Again, I've never heard of that one. So I need to go away and formulate a plan, but um, I'm very excited. I've got a pink chive, which I'm going to take. I do need a chive. I'm still trying to buy plants that are sort of have pinky hues. Obviously not all herbs have pinky hues, but where possible, that's what I'm going for. Pink and burgundy. This is pink hyssop. Pink flowers attract bees and butterflies and look their best when this small shrub is grown as a hedge. Oh gosh, that's a hedge as well. Can be clipped back in late March, has a strong menthol scent. A tea made from the dried flowers with honey added is ideal for relieving coughs and chest troubles. Oh gosh, that's a good, that's a medicinal herb. Well, that was a really enjoyable trip. Norfolk Herbs was amazing. There were so many herbs that I haven't seen before. So even though I thought that maybe I wouldn't buy anything this time, of course I did because um, it was just too tempting. So to start off with, I found the pink rosemary that I was looking for. It is actually just called Rosemary Pink. I bought four. And now I just need to work out how far they need to be spread out. Now, this is something that you can help me with. and I'd love your input. There's a really helpful chap at Norfolk Herbs. And he was telling me if I want a hedge that just can go straight across the top, they need to be planted at about 35 centimetres apart. If I want a bit more of an undulation, so each plant is individual, it goes up and down with them just joining slightly, they need to be 45 centimetres apart. So what do you think? Straight or undulating? Let me know in the comments. I am obviously going to go back and buy some more. I just need to work out how many I need. They'd only got four on display, but did say that they've got lots more. Now, the other thing is, to start my herb, to start the hedge off and to get it um, to start bushing out, I actually need to slice off the top as well, which when they look so healthy, that feels a bit um, unner unnerving, but I'll have to do that so that they then can start growing into a hedge, but that's for another day. Anyway, I did buy some herbs. I bought the ones that would be more difficult to find elsewhere and they actually split now into three categories. So I've got already got three shrub roses and so I can actually get going with these. The first ones are medicinal. I haven't heard of either of these before, but they're both really interesting. Look at this one. Come a bit closer, Rowan. That is called Sweet Woodruff and that one is called marshmallow i just thought the sweet woodruff had such a pretty pretty leaf so those are both for medicinal purposes and um rowan begged me not to talk for too long but i do need to tell you what they're useful so i'm going to read the label rowan's on work experience still with me and um she's a bit tired today so this one is sweet woodruff, which is, um, can be dried if it, it smells of freshly mown grass, which it does. And when dried, it can be used in sachets to fragrance linen, and it also makes a soothing medicinal tea. And marshmallow has pretty flowers as well. 
and uh, the roots have important soothing medicinal properties and can be made into the original marsh marshmallow lozenge to relieve coughs and sore throats. So those are for the medicinal area. I've actually decided to just have one purely de dedicated to um, salads. So this one is the Perlane, which I spoke to you about again. Just absolutely fantastic. Looks really pretty. Now the stem and the leaves of that can be used in salad. And this one is salad burnet, burnet, burnet. And um, this will actually keep its leaves throughout the winter. So I can use that in the winter to top up my salads too. So those are for my salad bed. And then these two are just for my culinary bed. Um, I've already got a chive, but that one is a pretty pink chive. And I use so much chive that I could actually do with another one. And this one is called Pesto Basil. So I'm going to try and propagate this just like I did the other week with the basil. And I'll add a link just up in the corner. But that just looks really pretty. Now, all of these are perennials. I just haven't got time for annuals at the moment. So I'm just going for per perennials. And it feels exciting to get started. Just another couple of things. This is a marjoram. I already do have a marjoram, but look at the colours of that. I know I told you this earlier, but I want this area to be soft pinks and burgundies. So this just will look perfect. And I may put this in my bathtub. I think the bathtub is looking a bit full, so I might just keep it. It, it is suitable for pots, so I might just keep it in that terracotta pot there. And finally, I did say if I saw a horseradish, I would buy one and here one is. Now this has actually got to be planted away from the others because I think it spreads quite, quite ferociously. So I'm going to do a bit of research and see if this pot is big enough. And if it is, I need to leave it for two years or two seasons um, until I can actually start harvesting it. But Oh, I do love some horseradish with um, my Sunday roast. So that's it. I need to do a bit of weeding out here. It's um, with all this rain that we've been having, the weeds are popping up. I need to finish this path, work out how much rosemary I need and get planting. I hope you've enjoyed that today. I'm actually posting this, it's on Wednesday. I'll actually be posting my vlog today at six o'clock. I'm going to split my vlog now into two. So I'll be posting on a Wednesday and a Saturday at six. There's quite a lot to talk about. There's lots going on in the house, lots going on in the garden and just general adventures out and about. So I think that I can split that and it makes it more manageable to watch. So um, let me know what you think. If you want me to show you anything else, just drop me a message and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.